Ladies and gentlemen, I am John Pace, a member of the R.M. Santilli Foundation and the chairman of the World Lecture Series on Hadronic Mathematics, Mechanics, and Chemistry. It is a sincere pleasure and honor for me to introduce Professor Leong Ying, a nuclear physicist from Princeton, New Jersey, who has conducted independent verification of Professor Santilli's intermediate controlled nuclear fusion without harmful radiations or waste, with his associates also from Princeton, Professors Robert Brenna and Theodore Kulislawski. This lecture is evidently a continuation of Lecture 5B by Professor Santilli in which he presents his new intermediate controlled fusion. Consequently, the understanding of this lecture requires a knowledge of the preceding lecture 5B as well as, most importantly, of the original technical literature quoted all available in free PDF downloads. Let us recall that in the preceding lecture 5B, Professor Santilli presented the controlled nuclear synthesis of nitrogen from deuterium and carbon achieved via an equipment known as Santilli Hadronic Reactor, which is filled up with deuterium gas traversed by a DC electric arc between carbon electrodes. Professor Jing, Brenna, and Kulislawski have confirmed in full Professor Santilli's original measurements of nitrogen synthesis via systematic and comprehensive independent measurements, with particular reference on the independent confirmation of the production of a large amount of thermal energy without any harmful radiation. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to emphasize again the magnitude of the discovery here presented. We are dealing with an independent confirmation of the first and only large production of energy via nuclear fusions that is a multiple of used energy. We are dealing with the first and only truly controlled fusions, and we are dealing with the first and only nuclear fusions without the emissions of harmful radiations and without the release of harmful wastes. Hence, we are dealing with an important discovery permitted by hadronic mathematics, physics, and chemistry for the benefit of mankind, particularly in our times of increasingly alarming climactic changes. Among a vast documentation of the independent verification by Professor Ying and his associates collected by our foundation. I have selected the following pictures as an introduction of Lecture 5C. The first picture shows Professor Ying inspecting Santilli Hadronic Reactor used in the measurements. The next picture shows Professor Ying checking the preparation of the measurements by technicians of the Institute for Basic Research. Chris Lynch, and Eugene West. The next picture shows Professors Ying and Santilli inspecting the hadronic reactor following a test, in which there was the development on the tips of the electrodes in its interior of extremely high temperatures, as shown by the scorching of the carbon electrodes. The next picture shows from the right Professors Brenna, Kosislawski, Ying, and Santilli with the experimental setup. This figure shows the complete experimental setup, including from the left the heat exchanger, the hadronic reactor, the AC-DC converter Miller 1000, and in the forefront, various instruments. You can see here another view of the used detectors and other instruments. This picture shows the pressure bottles containing deuterium gas certified as being 99.99% .99 pure. This figure shows Professor Brenna with various detectors used for confirmation of lack of harmful radiation. Another view of the all-important confirmation of lack of radiation. This picture shows Professor Ying supervising the correct recording of the temperature increase in Santilli Hadronic Reactor that reached scorching values in one minute of operation. I present here a view of the various meetings of the experimental team to analyze the results of the measurements in which we should note the absence of Professor Santilli as requested by an independent verification. The following pictures show some of the various measurements confirming that the heat produced by Santilli Hadronic Reactor is indeed a multiple of the used electric energy as well as of nuclear origin. 
This picture shows the incontrovertible experimental evidence of the increased nitrogen gas independently measured by the Oneida Research Laboratories of Whitesboro, New York. This final picture documents for posterity the entire experimental team and the equipment used for the confirmation of the Santilli Intermediate Controlled Nuclear Fusions. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege and honor for me to introduce to you Professor Leong Ying. I'm Dr. Leong Ying and today I'll be reviewing Professor Santilli's new clean energy for a new area. Particularly, I'll be concentrating on new hydronic energies based on nuclear types. Four words. In this section, we outline new clean energies that can be predicted and developed at the nuclear level by the use of hydronic mechanics, for which reasons we will call new hydronic energies of nuclear type. The main aspect is that all nuclear energies that can be conceived by the use of quantum mechanics were fully known by the middle of the 20th century and they all turned out as being environmentally unacceptable because of the production of harmful radiation, such as those composed of penetrating neutron fluxes and they release radioactive nuclear waste our society has been unable to dispose of in an environmentally acceptable way. Santilli has study existing nuclear energy for decades and has identified the insufficiency of quantum mechanics in nuclear physics and has constructed a covering of quantum mechanics specifically conceived for nuclear structures and in the process predicted new form of nuclear energies without harmful radiation or radioactive waste that are inconceivable for quantum mechanics but that are predicted by the covering hydronic mechanics. These have been achieved with experimental verification and solicited the independent experimental confirmation. Following over 30 years of preparatory mathematical and physical research, Professor Santelli has presented the first type of new clean hydronic energies of nuclear type in his 1999 and 2001 monograph and then in his 2008 memoirs. The novel Intermediate Control Nuclear Fusion it reports on its industrialization as predicted by Hydronic Mechanics. Hydronic Journal, Volume 31. The experimental verification of the new energy with particular reference to the absence of neutron or other harmful radiations was achieved in his 2010 paper experimental verification of the novel intermediate control nuclear fusion without harmful radiation. The independent experimental verification of the new energy with particular reference again to the absence of harmful radiation was done also in 2010 by three nuclear physicists from a company in Princeton, New Jersey and it is available in the paper Verification of Santilli's Intermediate Nuclear Fusion without harmful radiation and the production of molecular clusters. And this is a paper which I co-authored with my colleagues Bob Brenner and Ted Kilakowski. Professor Santilli's main idea for new control fusion. Because of the protracted insufficiencies of coal and hot fusion in his 2008 paper, Professor Santilli proposed, apparently for the first time, a new type of nuclear synthesis under the name of Intermediate Control Nuclear Fusion, or Intermediate Fusion, IF for short. Recall that atoms are normally protected by the electron clouds and the nuclei have a systematic exposure out of the, such cloud for the fusion to occur in a systematic fashion. The main shortcoming of the cold fusion is that the available energy is sufficient, is insufficient to control atomic electron clouds so as to expose nuclei, in which case no fusion is systematically possible. 
For the case of hot fusion, we have the opposite occurrence in which atoms are completely stripped of the electron clouds, but energies are simply excessive, thus preventing the possibility of a real control of nuclear fusion as well as known in particle scattering processes in which excessive collision energies prevent absorption. The name intermediate was proposed by Professor Santilli to denote that the available energy is in, indeed intermediate between those of the hot and cold fusion, thus avoiding the shortcoming of both fusion. More particularly, the available energy for the proposed intermediate fusion is set to a name minimal value of energy sufficient for the control of the atomic clouds to expose the nuclei, verifying all conservation laws and control the synthesis. The above conditions are verified, e.g. for the plasma created by electric arc, where the plasma is typically around 10,000 Fahrenheit, thus having an energy that cannot be quantified as belonging to either cold or hot fusion. The energy is then carefully selected to have additional minimum value for fusion to occur, so as to avoid the indicated impossibility for controlled fusion under excessive collision energy. Priority is then given to identification of physical laws to the verification of the systematic industrially variable fusion and their engineering realization. It should be indicated that numerous plasmas have been used in cold fusion research. Nevertheless, dramatic differences will soon emerge between Professor Santilli's intermediate nuclear fusion and existing plasma fusion research due to irreconcilability differences in the assumed basic laws. Santelli then proposed in his 1999 and 2001 monograph, as well as his 2008 article, specific reactors called hydronic reactors, because based on hydronic mechanics and chemistry, for the possible industrial utilization of the clean energy expected from his intermediate fusion. To achieve this task, Professor Santilli identified the basic principles that are applicable for all controlled fusion, whether cold, intermediate or hot. Identify the basic laws that have to be verified for any controlled fusion to occur, and to propose in manufacturing detailed specific hydronic reactors based on the realization and optimization of said physical laws. The physics of intermediate control nuclear fusion was first presented by Professor Santilli in his 1998 monograph, studied from a chemical viewpoint in his 2001 monograph, and then finalized in his 2008 memoirs. In this section, we read these studies based on the following main assumptions. Assumption 1. The synthesis of neutrons from protons and electrons is the first and most fundamental synthesis in nature. Nuclear fusion can only follow that on the neutron, hence no nuclear fusion is expected to occur and energies intermediate between the cold and hot fusion unless reactors are capable of choosing of achieving the neutron synthesis. Consequently, intermediate control nuclear fusion should take into consideration possible contribution for the synthesis of neutrons from protons and electrons. Assumption 2. Quantum mechanics is fundamentally inapplicable to the neutron synthesis as well as that of all nuclear synthesis at large due to, its due to its reversible structure compared to irreversibility of the synthesis considered and for many other reasons. Consequently, any appraisal of nuclear fusion basically de dependent on quantum description cannot be final. Assumption 3. Operator mechanics applicable to nuclear fusion should first achieve a time invariant numeric representation of all characteristics of the fundamental synthesis of neutrons from protons and electrons as a condition to be applicable to subsequent nuclear synthesis. Hydronic mechanics is the only mechanics verifying these prerequisites to our knowledge at this writing. Other theories are demissed by Professor Santilli's unless one the chief said numeric representation of all characteristics of a neutron, and two, said representation is invariant over time. Predict the same numbers under the same condition at different times. And three, is proved to be inequivalent to hydronic mechanics. The guidelines for the conception of hydronic reactors have been based on nature rather than on pre-existing research. 
as established by chemical analysis of air bubbles in amber about 100 million years ago Earth's atmosphere had about 40% nitrogen while its current percentage is about double that value. Other chemical analysis showed that the increase of nitrogen in our atmosphere has been gradual. In Santilli's view, these data suggest that planet existence in our atmosphere of a process causing the natural synthesis of nitrogen from lighter elements. Since nature is notoriously friendly towards the environment, such a process is expected to synthesize nitrogen without the release of harmful massive radiation such as neutron, protons or alpha radiation, from which intermediate controlled nuclear fusion, law 4, was derived. Among all possible origins of our nitrogen synthesis in our atmosphere, the most probable one is given by lightning. Because of a serious scientific explanation for sunder cannot be achieved with conventional physical and chemical reaction, thus requiring nuclear synthesis. In fact, a numeric explanation of sunder requires energy equivalent to hundreds of tons of explosive that simply cannot be explained by conventional processes due to a very small cylindrical volume of air affected by lightning plus its extremely short duration of an order of a nanosecond. The hydrogen synthesis by lightning provides indeed a numerical explanation of sunder as well as the slow rate of nitrogen increase in our atmosphere. Among all possible synthesis, the most probable one results to be the synthesis of nitrogen from carbon and deuterium. However, the deuterium presence in our atmosphere is excessively small to permit a numerical explanation of sunder. It is at this point where the synthesis of neutron by lightning from proton and electron enters rather forcefully into the arena of nuclear synthesis. In fact, the neutron synthesis is expected to be necessary prerequisite for the synthesis of deuterium in the atmosphere that in turn allows nitrogen synthesis with values sufficient to reach a numeric explanation of sunder. At any rate, Professor Santillis succeeded in synthesizing neutrons from protons and electrons precisely by the use of electric discharge in a hydrogen gas. Needless to say, numerous additional fusion are also possible on the lightning and some of them will be indicated below. Hydronic reactors have been conceived to reproduce lightning processes within a gas as close as technically possible at the moment. In the author's view, the biggest unknown in this writing is not given by the identification of possible nuclear synthesis triggered by lightning, but by our insufficient knowledge of lightning itself due to departures from quantum mechanics with studies is covering hydronic mechanics are not yet completed at this writing. The successful achievement of intermediate controlled nuclear fusion with industrial relevance crucially depends on the proper selection of the hydronic fuel. In this section, we study new examples of hydronic fuels selected under the condition that 1. The original and final nucleus are light, natural and stable isotopes. 2. The nuclear synthesis causes no emission of harmful radiation, such as neutron, proton, alpha, etc. And 3. The energy produced is much bigger than the total energy used by the equipment for its production. Note the difference between the conventional nuclear fission, with the emphasis is in the use of large, often unstable isotopes, and the proposed novel hydronic energy, with emphasis in the opposite selection of isotopes as light and stable as possible. As I indicated earlier, the latter emphasis is necessary to achieve a basically novel nuclear fusion without harmful radiation and without harmful waste. Santilli has shown that these main objectives are indeed realistic not by the use of quantum theory, but by the use of covering hydronic mechanics and its law. Verification of Santilli's intermediate nuclear fusion without harmful radiation and the production of molecular clusters. Authored by Bob Brenner, Ted Kulakowski and Dr. Leong Ying from Princeton Gamma Tech. The above identified experimentalists under the leadership of Dr. Leong Ying spent one week in mid-March 2010 at the laboratory of the Institute for Basic Research in Tappan Springs, Florida for the specific purpose of independently confirming or denying Santilli's measurement presented in the preceding section.
For this purpose, said experimentalist had to use exactly the same experimental setup as used by Santilli. Santilli did not participate in the measurement, but the Institute of Basic Research Technician, Mr. West, Mr. Rodriguez, and Mr. Alban, and other assistants, Dr. Leong Ying and his associate, in the exact reputation of the synthesis of nitrogen from the deuterium gas and carbon electrodes. Following expansive and repeated measurement, the experimentalist confirmed both the experimental detection of molecular clusters as well as the nitrogen synthesis by reaching the following conclusion. The result taken from the experimental runs conducted on a hydraulic reactor indicated some form of exothermal reaction taking place that produced clusters of higher mass components. Since chemical reaction and combustion cannot have occurred in a pure deteriorating environment, the conclusion leads to an indication of the process described as intermediate controlled nuclear fusion without harmful radiation. The deuterium carbon fusion. The above important verification can be summarized as follows. The objective was a study of Santilli's intermediate nuclear fusion of deuterium and carbon by the intermediate controlled nuclear fusion process to form nitrogen, which can be described using hydronic mechanics with the following reaction in the symbol identified as a trigger which <coughs> creates from hydrogen and carbon the nitrogen and release 0.0111 atomic mass unit of energy which is equivalent to 10.339 MeV. The trigger mechanism to initiate the reaction process is the electric arc that polarizes the carbon and hydrogen atoms to form molecular clusters. On the atomic distances between the axially coupled atoms, the extremely strong magnetic fields generated by the arc toroidally deform the atomic orbitals and thereby exposing the nuclei from the electronic clouds. The close proximity of the bare nuclei leads to nuclear fusion with the generation of excess heat. The hydronic reactor was pressurized with pure deuterium gas by first evacuating with a mechanical vacuum pump the chamber and then backfilling with the gas from a supply bottle. Gas samples were taken before and after each initial reaction and sent to an independent laboratory for spectral vapor analysis. Each experimental run was started close to ambient temperature of around 25 degrees Celsius with the electric arc power for two minutes. The watt meter measured an average power consumption of 1,550 watt hour, which equates to an energy input of 5.4 megajoule. A total of three runs were performed at varying starting pressures of 100, 75 and 50 psi. For the 100 psi test, gas samples before and after was taken. The reactor chamber was then purged and refilled with pure deuterium and a gas sample was taken at a starting pressure of 75 psi. After the reaction process of 75 psi, the gas sample was extracted. The reactor was then allowed to cool back to ambient and the pressure reduced to 50 psi for another reaction and a final gas sample taken. The gas sample analysis. Deuterium is non-combustible and there are also negligible amount of oxygen contained in the hydraulic reactor for any combustible processes to have occurred. And if there is no hydraulic chemistry or fusion process taking place then we would expect to observe similar vapor spectra for the samples taken before and after initiation by the electric arc. The analyzed gas spectra for the five gas samples, reported values in part per million, are accurately reported in the said article. The spectra analysis indicates a reduction in the amount of deuterium following each reaction. At 100 psi, the decrease was approximately 2.5%, and at 75 psi, it was 3%. The decrease in the amount of nitrogen in the 100 psi data can be misleading, since the evolved nitrogen can be trapped in clustered molecules, as indicated by the existence of high mass entities in the spectra data following all the reactions. These previously known, unknown high mass molecules are further evidence of the hydronic chemistry taking place. Elemental microanalysis. Samples are deposited on the surface of the 
graphite electrodes were removed for material characterization in a scanning electron microscope using an energy dispersive spectrometer X-ray detector. The detector is a liquid nitrogen cool lithium drifted silicon crystal biased to operate as a semiconductor junction. X-rays liberate electron hole pairs in the junction and the amount of charge collected proportional to X-ray energies. The electron beam striking the samples generate the electronic excitation. <coughs> and it's the decay of these electronic shells that emits the characteristic energies unique to each element. The EDS detector is a PGT's model LS10133 mounted on an ISI Super 3 scanning electron microscope. The samples were epoxy to a holder placed directly in line with the electron beam. The long vacuum insulator end cap housing the silly crystal is inserted into a scanning electron microscope chamber in close proximity to sample. Fluorescence X-ray scattering of the target sample and entering the end cap through a thin wall polymer window are identified by the EDS detector system. The elemental microanalysis spectra taken on the surface deposit of the graphite electrode showed a prominent X-ray peak at 277 electron volt, which is for carbon K line. There is a small adjacent peak at 392 electron volt which is the nitrogen K-alpha X-ray that is noticeable above the general background level. Since the electron <coughs> scanning electron microscope chamber is under vacuum, then the detected nitrogen must exist in some non-gaseous form, possibly within cluster molecules. Thermal analysis. Platinum resistive temperature sensors were securely fastened to the surfaces of the steel chamber's central tube and one of the end plates. Temperature readings were noticed down each minute after the electric arc was piled up to produce a thermal profile of the hydronic reactor. A thermal final element analysis was simulated for the reactor to estimate the expected temperature rise if the only source of heat came from the electric arc. Comparison curves of the measured thermal profiles against the final element analysis computed values are 5 megajoule, 5.5 megajoule, and 6 megajoule energy input are compared. The data indicates the generated excess heat of approximately half a megajoule above the total injected energy input of 5.4 megajoule from the electric arc. We note that each reaction releases approximately 10 MeV of nuclear Fusion, hence we assume all the excess heat is through the intermediate controlled nuclear fusion process, then this is equivalent to a generation of roughly 1,018 or micromole of fusion products. The radiation analysis. PGT SAM 940 sodium iodide scintillator detector is self-calibrating the potassium energy of 1.416 MeV. The helium proportional counter was factory calibrated against California 252 neutron source. For safety and security reasons, the source is embedded in wax and locked inside the steel vault. Opening the vault door and placing the SAM 940 instrument approximately a meter from the source, we were able to detect an average neutron level of 0.8 counts per second. With the vault door closed and the instrument removed from the vicinity, the background level fell to less than 0.03 counts per second. We compared the normal background levels <coughs> to, to show that there was no emitted gamma rays or neutron detector emanating from the hydronic reactor during the nuclear fusion occurring within the chamber. Conclusion In conclusion, the 2010 paper by Dr. Leong Ying and his collaborators confirms all discovery presented by Professor Santilli in his 2010 paper, namely, 1. Due to lack of any possible combustion in a metal chamber filled with pure deuterium gas traversed by a DC arc between carbon electrodes, the excess energy detected by experimentalists over the energy of the DC arc is necessary due to nuclear fusion. Inspection of chemical analysis before and after the test, as well as examination of the case, we view that the sole possible fusion is that 
first achieved by Centilli from deuterium and carbon. 2. Systematic measurement conducted with various detectors have confirmed that no harmful radiation of any type was detected in any of the tests outside the hydronic reactor, thus confirming that said nitrogen synthesis occurs without the emission of neutron or other harmful radiation. Additional inspection of the interior of the hydronic reactor following the test confirmed Santilli's finding that said nitrogen synthesis is achieved without any release of harmful waste. In any case, a study of the case establishes the lack of energy necessary for the fission of carbon and or deuterium nuclei as a prerequisite for the emission of harmful radiation, as a result of which either the deuterium and carbon electrofuse into the hydrogen nucleus or they do not without any possibility of releasing harmful radiation or waste. 3. Examination of chemical analysis of deuterium gas before and after being traversed by the DCR establishes the creation of the latter case of new heavy chemical species detectable all the way up to 400 AMU, a number of which detected microscopic percentage which new species cannot possibly exist in a pure deuterium gas. This evidence disproves in a final way the widespread opinion that the new species are fragments of heavier molecules, since the latter did not exist in the original deuterium gas. The same evidence dismisses the possibility that a new species has a valence bond between DC arc notoriously break down valence bond and cannot possibly create any. Consequently, the independent evidence gathered by the three nuclear physicists from Princeton provides the experimental confirmation of the existence of the new chemical species of Santilli's molecules.